Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today's video is really just a showcasing of my entire Poison Dart Frog collection that I currently own and breed. So without further ado, enjoy these gorgeous frogs that I'm so lucky to own. Enjoy. As you can see here, this is my female bullseye. Um, pretty obvious to tell by the big dot right in the center of her back. And here's my male. His dot was very small uh, when I first got him. It's grown a little bit, but it's clearly not as obvious as the females. But still, a gorgeous frog. He's also not quite as black as her. He's got sort of a more uh, brownish tint, I guess, to him. His overall body color. And here we have the pair. The female is on the left and the male is on the right. And they're just sitting on a leaf. Up next we have the Ufagalamani yellow. And here's my male. These might be my favorite frog of all time. I've just always loved the yellow Amani. A lot of people make fun and call them, um, you know, Lucamellus, banded Lukes which I just think is funny. I mean, it's supposed to be a joke, but it's kind of an insult to these frogs. Uh, they look nothing like Leucomelis, and they do not act like Leucomelis as well. Here's my female. She's got really, really nice white toes, um, which their froglets also have the white toes, which is a nice thing and seems to be a desired trait for the yellow Lamani. Actually, all Lamani. Here we have a uh, Ufaka histrionica redhead. This is my female here. These are one of my favorite species mainly because, I mean, they look really cool. Don't get me wrong, I do love them. Um, I probably like the Lamani a little better. But what is so cool about the redhead offspring is that you can have some that look similar to the parents. Or you can have some that look like a completely different species of frog, um, you know, bred them. And that's probably the coolest thing about them is just you get such a, a, a wide array of offspring, the variety of how they look. You know, some are have really fine spots, the yellow spots. Some have really big blotches. Some have just awesome red heads, you know. Um, it, it's just, they're all completely different and that's probably the coolest thing about them and probably my favorite thing about them. They are pretty bold. Um, you know, I have, they're in the 180 gallon vivarium, so there's a million spots for them to hide. So they're not always out, but I can usually find them. Here's the Ophaga Sylvatica San Lorenzo. This is my female here. Also just stunning frogs. They have the model book where, you know, it just, it looks like they jumped into a thorn bush or a bunch of jaggers or something, but that's how they're supposed to look, and they're just super awesome, where it's almost looked like marbling, um, and then they have these bright, brighter colored legs, at least the female does. She's more orange on her back, orangish reddish, and her legs are like lava. This is the male here. Um, he's a very bold frog, always out, always calling, usually in the spot he's in, somewhere amongst these, there's three bromeliads here that he kind of hangs out on and constantly calls. So these are also just really cool frogs. Um, and they're nice, you know, the large obligates are nice because, you know, they can eat on Hydei and some bigger food items. This is the Ufaga sylvatica bilsa. This is my male. It's got a really cool, almost reticulated pattern on him. Like I said in the other video, he's almost always out. You guys may notice that my bilsa female here looks a little odd, and it's because she is. I received her, and she had some interesting bone developments going on. Uh, I kept her anyways. She eats well and breeds well, and her offspring are healthy. So I kept her. 
and she's living a happy life. So, Moving on to some of the smaller obligates. These are Ufaga Pamilio Salarte. This is my female here. As you guys heard in the other video, I was talking about that little red spot or brown spot. You can kind of see it looks like dirt on the right. It's actually a little spot on her. That's why I can always tell it's her. Also, she's extremely chubby. They really are just gorgeous frogs. And if you've never seen a frog glow, these are probably the closest thing you'll ever see in a vivarium actually glow. They're by far my brightest frogs. You can spot them from across the room. Just really neat little frogs. And here's my male, Salarte. Like I said, he uh, does not have any spots. And he's built much thinner than the female. Still, just an incredible looking frog. They have little white tips on their toes. They're kind of hard to see. It's not like bastimentos, but you can kind of tell they're about the little white tips. And here's the male again. I have both frogs in this clip. Here is the male. I changed the white balance. And here is the female. You can just see how different th differently they are built. So that'll do it for the Salarte. Moving on to the Bastimentos Island. This is the cemetery locale. And here is my female. Um, something interesting about my cemetery locale is that they've changed color multiple times. When I received them, they were orange and red, and then they turned bright yellow, um, where it was like shockingly yellow, and now they're back to pretty much orange, with you know a slight yellow coloration still to them. They're not like a tangerine, I guess. They're a little lighter, but uh, this is my male here. And as you can see, is no longer bright yellow. It's kind of orange. <laughs> um, they're really cool frogs with the white feet and the white bellies. Definitely up there as far as my top favorites for Pamilio. And this is the unknown locale Bastimentos. When I say unknown locale, when they were imported or exported, they just came in as Bastimentos. So there's no site-specific locality on these guys. This is my female here, who is in my top five out of my whole collection for, you know, single animals. I just adore her. And as you can see, we had a little juvenile join the fun there. Wanted to get on the camera, so... It jumped right into action there. And I'm just taking some more shots of my female here. Trying to focus on there, right there. And this is still the female. I may have spent a little extra time, as you can tell, she's one of my favorites, like I said. And here's the male. As you can see, he just got done calling, and his vocal sack was still puffed up. I think a juvenile hops in. Yep, yeah, there's another juvenile. <laughs> juvenile slash sub-adult. It's actually pretty pretty decent size there. That's about the size where I ship them. So, and here's the lovely couple. The male's definitely a little more reclusive than the female. Seems to get uh, spooked easier. He really doesn't have any spots on his back like she does. Um, he's got spots on his legs though. 
Up next, we have an interesting tiny little species, uh, the Escudo. This is my male. Some people call them Superman frogs because they're red and blue. Um, there's multiple other red and blue frogs too, but um, these ones are really small, and their babies are ridiculously small. But uh, they're cool. They have a slightly different call than most Pamilio. It's a higher pitch, and it's faster. Um, I couldn't get my female by herself for the video, so I just did a little combination shot. You know, I could have cropped cropped them out, but I didn't feel like doing that because it would make it look weird. But uh, there's the male on the left, and the female is in the back right. Um, she's a little bit more pink than he is. He's kind of got more of a red coloration. His color is washed out here by the light. As you can see, they're close to the top of the tank. And uh, her color is more pink, but uh, and she's also definitely more round in uh, shape. Definitely a cool species and a must-have for Pamilio owners. And here we have another must-have for any Pamilio keeper. These are the Pamilio Rio Calubra. This is my female. She's uh, very finely spotted. I guess is the best way to put it, and she has a really light blue belly. Some uh, Calubre have more of a reticulated pattern or a heavy spot, similar to my male here. Sort of on the fine spot side as well. Uh, he's got a couple spots under his belly. Many of their froglets are very heavily spotted on their belly, which is pretty cool, I think. They're blue Pamilio. It's a must-have, like I said. All right, moving on to some of the bigger frogs that kind of got my start in the hobby with. Uh, these are the green sips, green sip Halloweeny. Now uh, this is my female here. Just big, bold, beautiful frogs. That's kind of what got me into the hobby in the first place. You know, they're always out. They're always ready to eat, and uh, they're relatively easy to get to breed. They can be a pain, though, raising as far as the babies. They just they eat a ton of food. <laughs> and here is the female again. And here's the male. This male's pretty old. Um, I want to say around eight years old, maybe. Eight or nine. And next we have the Tinctorius Katari. These are my, by far my favorite Tinctorius. They just uh, have a really unique color, and also their patterning is very different from basically every Tinctorius out there. Um, I could go into detail in another video, but they're really cool. They're really dark, definitely hard to photograph. Um, video is much better for them with white balance and everything. You know, a lot of times you can try to take pictures of them unless you use the flash. You just lose everything. They look like little black blobs. So um, that's my female here. And last of the Tinctorius, we have these solid yellow backs. These are some of my biggest frogs and definitely some of my biggest eaters, if not the biggest eater, um, is this frog in particular right here. This is my female. She's a beast. Eats like crazy, and she's got cool little blue markings on her legs on the back, which are pretty cool. I really like about her. This is an old frog, too. I think I've had this these, this pair since 2009, I want to say. So, yeah, nine years. 
some pretty old frogs. They're still breeding and laying viable clutches and creating viable offspring as well. And this is the male here. It's quite a bit smaller than the female. Uh, not in length, but in the girth. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. <clears throat> And finally, the last species that I breed, these are the fine spot Dendrobates leucomelis. This is the female here. These are by far my favorite leucomelis morph. I like them better than the bluefoot, greenfoot, bandits, orange banded, sunglasses, doesn't matter, chocolate. These are by far my favorite. And that's just personal preference. Some people may not like them, which is completely fine. This is my male here. These guys took a bit of a break for me, and uh, they recently got back on track uh, maybe two months ago, started laying clutches again. So that's always a good thing. I just really like the, the pattern. I think it's the most interesting for uh, the Leucomelos with the fine spot. Honestly, it's I like reticulated and fine spot pretty much in every every species I own. Not to say that they're better than the ones that aren't. It just that's my preference. So, okay. All right, everybody. Hopefully, you enjoyed this new style of commentating in my video, and hopefully, you guys enjoyed seeing my breeder collection. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this new voiceover method rather than just walking around and talking with the camera. Also, don't forget, follow me on Instagram at Ufraga Histrionica. We'll see you next time.